Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. So a little while back, I did a video on the Rough Rider Camp King knife, and in it, I was showing off the older Imperial Camp King knives from the uh, 70s and such, and I had mentioned that the knife had a shell handle. I explained a little bit about that, but I didn't go into great detail on it. Uh, but I thought um, it was something that was worth uh, an actual video, something to actually describe exactly what a shell handle was. Uh, and they are very common, and um, uh, a lot of companies use them. Uh, let's see, I know Imperial used them, Colonial used them, uh, 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 Providence Cutlery Company used them, Ideal Cutlery Company. Basically, any budget knife out there probably had uh, shell handles at one time or another. I don't think um, Camillus ever got around to putting them on a Camco or anything. Uh, but a lot of companies did use shell handles and well let's take a look and see exactly what a shell handle is now I'm not going to do anything to this knife because this one is in near mint condition but I have an older Camp King here um, basically the same knife just not in as decent a shape and uh, well as you can see things are turning into metal on there so let's take a look at this knife and exactly what a shell handle is. Now full disclosure, I have taken this knife apart before, so it's going to come apart a little easier than what you're going to see uh, if I had not ever taken it apart. But we have to start by removing the removable bail. And the way you have to do that is you pull it out on one side and pull it over to the side a little bit. And then basically you're going to need to take a pair of pliers and pull the other side out otherwise what happens is it slips inside and it just rattles around and it doesn't fall off so you actually do need a pair of pliers to take it off and then the next thing you do is um, you're going to have to take a little screwdriver or something and get it in between the liner um, and the or well the handle and the uh, the back springs here and you see where the liner is and so you just basically take a little screwdriver and push in there and you're going to have to push in for a bit and then once you get a good gap in there you're going to need to go over to the other side and also uh, put in the screwdriver and bend it out a bit and what you're actually doing is loosening up this little clamp right here on the end um, like I said I've done this once already so I'm actually making it look harder than it is for me right now but once you get that bent up a little bit, still a little tricky as you can see, get that out of the way, and then the handle slides right off. And that's why it's called a shell. Notice you've got the bolsters and the black portion and the, uh, the shield all in one piece. And if you turn it over on the other side, you see right there that is the enamel coating that they put on there which is basically dried up paint this was just painted you see the camp king logo stamped in the back here uh, and the shells it's all in there uh, and you can do the same thing you can take it off on the other side and basically if you notice it's got a couple little spots there where you actually just clamp it into the uh, the uh, the brass liner it's just clamped onto there. And you can see here where the, um, the enamel paint has worn off. Sometimes you'll see somebody saying that they have a all metal one. Well, they're all all metal. And uh, the reason they went to these, I believe, is because uh, it doesn't shrink. Before, the economy knives would use like some kind of celluloid. And if you notice, celluloid definitely shrinks, costs a lot more money. Uh, and so that's why uh, I think a lot of knife companies went over to uh, the shell handles and they really started showing up after World War II and it's because um, it was just really easy just to stamp these things out and then clamp it onto the side of the knife and, uh, and it makes a really good handle and depending on the quality of um, enamel paint that they're using it holds up pretty well. 
Now, one of the problems is these were made back in the uh, 50s and 60s. So most likely this enamel paint that are, that's on these handles is full of lead. So that's something to be uh, um, uh, cautious about when dealing with it because uh, you're talking about basically lead paint on the outside of these knives. So it's definitely something that you don't want uh, little kids licking or anything or you licking yourself because uh, you really don't need the lead. And also, as you can tell, they can, the, the lead can break off. So you gotta be very careful with those. But um, hopefully that gives you an idea of exactly what a person is talking about when they call it a shell cover or a shell handle or something. And you can usually spot them because they've got this little clamp here that clamps around the edge and goes into the little divot right there to hold the handle in place. And uh, you will notice over time, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but the handle actually does move around a bit. So there you go. That's um, shell handles on old camp knives. And uh, also, it wasn't just camp knives. This knife here also has shell handles, uh, and it's a little fish, fish stiletto or fish handle stiletto fishtail stiletto. I think this one is by Colonial. Um, but doesn't look at it first, but yeah, these also are shell handles. And uh, here's the same knife without the shells. So uh, you'll find it in almost any type of uh, economy brand knife out there that was made back in the 50s and 60s. A lot of them will have a shell handle and it's basically just an all metal handle and everything is just stamped in there. Now some of them, um, the shield will actually, they'll have two little holes in the handle and the shield will actually snap into place. Uh, let me see if I have one here that has it that way. Yep, I don't know if you can see it here. I'm not gonna take the knife apart, but if you notice the Forest Master here, this is by Colonial. The uh, shell handle actually has two little slits in it where the, uh, the, the, uh, the shield actually gets stuck in there and then it's folded over and then snapped into place on the knife. But this also is a shell handle knife. So even, um, um, you know, knives that have a removable shield can have a shell handle. And actually, um, do I have another one of these? wasn't going to be doing this right now, but what the heck. Another Forest Master. <laughs> Notice that one of these ended up having the, uh, the shield put on upside down. Um, so whoever was making it that day, I guess they had a little bit too much to drink. But uh, still, both of these are just shell handled uh, knives. Uh, this time by Colonial and Camp King did the same thing. So uh, the only difference is this Camp King's has theirs stamped right in there too and they just paint around it. So hopefully that helps uh, folks out there understand exactly what a shell handle is on a knife and that's usually what it's referred to as a shell handle or a shell cover. And it was very popular in the 50s, 60s, 70s. I don't know if it was used before World War II or not. And I should also mention, there's also a lot of shell knives that came out of uh, out of Germany, um, especially like if you found any kind of uh, souvenir knives that were made in Germany. These are also shell knives. They feel heavier than like the, uh, the uh, Camp King knives and stuff, but they are also shell handled knives. Along with also a bunch of those Richard knives out of our, um, out of England, uh, especially the RCMP uh, knives, they were also shell knives. So, uh, it's, like I said, it's a very popular thing to do, and um, it was a great way to make sure that the handles didn't shrink or gas out on you. So, really not a bad idea when you get right down to it, especially for a budget knife. Now the question is, do you? Take a really nice looking uh, Camp King knife from uh, the 60s or 70s that's in really good shape and 
pop off those shells and put on new handles or keep them as they are? Hmm, something to think about. Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.